Hello everyone, I'm Larry, a professor of accounting, and in this brief video, I'd like to explain how we can look at all of the expenses in a company and split them out into the two categories known as product costs and period costs. For our example, let's assume we're looking at a manufacturing firm. This is a company that produces some type of a product. Maybe this is a toy company, a furniture company, uh, perhaps we produce some electronics such as televisions or cell phones, and we're showing that this company is spread across two separate buildings. There's the factory building, that is the low, wide building. This is where people go to work in coveralls, blue jeans, work boots, because this is the facility where we are making the products. And over here, we have a separate building, the tall building, that's the headquarters building. And this is where the president of the company has his or her office, the administrative staff that supports our senior staff, our accounting and finance department, our sales offices, they all reside within the headquarters building. Where we're ultimately going to go with this is that all of the costs incurred within the factory side of the operation will be categorized as product or manufacturing costs, whereas the costs incurred on the headquarters part of the operation, such as all of the selling and the general and administrative costs, these will be categorized as period costs. But we'll come back to period costs in just a moment. For now, let's focus on what is happening in the factory. Now, the factory side of our organization, this is where we produce our goods. All of the expenses incurred here are known as product or manufacturing costs. And there are three major categories of product costs. Direct material costs, direct labor costs, and manufacturing overhead. So what are direct material costs? These are the expenses for all of the raw materials we purchase that will go directly into the products we produce. So if we are operating a toy factory and we make Frisbees, that might be the thousands of dollars worth of plastic that we purchase every year that will go into the Frisbees. If this is a furniture factory and we make sofas and chairs, this could be all of the expenses for the wood and the upholstery that go into the furniture. Or if our factory produces televisions or cell phones, these are the expenses for all of the parts that we purchase that will go directly into the production of our units that we make in this factory, units of televisions or uh, cell phones. So that is direct material, the expenses for all of those parts or materials that go directly into the products we produce. In a moment, we'll tell you about indirect material, but hold that thought. Direct labor. What is direct labor? Direct labor includes all of the expenses, such as the wages, benefits, and insurance that we pay for our employees in this factory who actually produce the products. These are the people who make the products, are laying their hands on the products, are assembling the products, or are operating the machinery that makes the products. All of those people's wages and related employee expenses are categorized as direct labor. And again, these are the people that are actually making the products. And finally, the third category under product costs, manufacturing overhead. If we look at all of the expenses in this factory, again, they are product costs. The expenses that are not categorized as direct material or direct labor will be captured under this third general category of manufacturing overhead. And what does it include? How about the utilities in this factory? What about the insurance on the factory? How about the monthly lease on this factory? Let's take a look at a breakout of all these costs and it will give us a deeper look at what goes into manufacturing overhead. A moment ago you saw a picture, but now we're looking at a tree diagram that shows us the same costs. We have the product costs that are incurred on the factory side of the operation and the period costs 
that are incurred in that tall headquarters building for all of the sales and marketing and the upper level senior staff. We'll get to the period costs in a moment. Again, we're going to focus for now on the product costs. And we mentioned product costs include the categories of direct material, direct labor, and the general category of manufacturing overhead. Let's see what comes under manufacturing overhead. This special category known as indirect material. What expenses go into indirect material? Well, you'll recall a moment ago we explained that direct material includes all of the costs for materials we purchase that go directly into our products, such as plastic that goes into Frisbees, or upholstery and wood that will go into furniture. But what is included in indirect material? Indirect materials are used in the factory, but we'll give you an example. How about if we have machines in our factory that require about $100 a month worth of a special oil. We spend $100 monthly on a special oil or lubricant that needs to periodically be put into these machines in our factory. That's a material that's used in a factory. That oil does not go directly into the Frisbees that we stamp out or into the sofas and the chairs that we make. That oil, though, is used in the factory. It is a cost but that material would be considered an indirect material, and that expense would be categorized under indirect material within the overall category of manufacturing overhead. Now, here's another example, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We just mentioned that direct material expenses cover all of those materials or parts that go into our products, but there may be cases where there will be some material that we will buy that does go into each product, but it's such a trivial, incidental amount that it isn't even worth trying to track that material and its cost. For example, if our factory produces refrigerators, we can pretty easily track the cost of the direct materials that go into every refrigerator, such as the metal, the compressor, the plastic drawers that go into each refrigerator, but in our refrigerator factory, at the end of the line, we may have an employee that takes a small can of lubricant and shoots a little bit of that lubricant into each of the hinges on the door of each refrigerator. If we were to look at the amount of lubricant that is put into each refrigerator door, even though that is a material that is going into each unit of product, it is such an incidental, trivial amount a fraction of a fraction of a cent that we would not even bother to track it as part of our direct materials. We would just put that overall cost under indirect materials. So if we spend $50 a month in these cans we purchase of lubricant, we would just categorize that cost under indirect material under manufacturing overhead. What about the rags, the paper towels? the cleaning solvents that we use in the factory. Those are materials that are being used in the factory. They're not going directly into our products, but those also would be included under indirect material. How about the indirect labor? We mentioned before that direct labor includes the costs, the expenses for the wages, the insurance, and the benefits of all of our factory staff who are actually making the goods, producing the goods. But indirect labor covers all of those other people working in the factory. In this factory, we also have walking the halls security guards. We have people who are production supervisors. We have custodial and maintenance staff supporting the factory. We have quality assurance staff in the factory. These are people who are not directly producing the goods. How do we categorize their wages? Those people are indirect labor. Again, because they're in the factory, they are a product cost. But unlike the staff who are actually producing the goods, who are direct labor, the indirect labor in our factory are the people who are not producing the goods, 
but support the factory operations, such as production supervisors, quality control staff, security guards in the factory, custodial and maintenance staff in the factory. And again, this is a cost that is included under the larger category of manufacturing overhead within the factory and its product costs. And finally, we have all of the other costs in the factory, the utilities in the factory, the lease on the factory, the insurance for our factory operation. All of this is included under manufacturing overhead, and manufacturing overhead is included under product costs along with direct material and direct labor. Now this covers the factory side of the operation. Recall that we have the tall building here on the right that is our headquarters building. Who is in the headquarters building? The accounting and finance department, the chief financial officer, the president of the company, the legal part of the company. How about the sales department? All of the costs related to this part of the operation are separate from the factory part of the operation. These costs over here in the headquarters building, which are often referred to as general and administrative costs or selling expenses, are categorized as period or non-manufacturing costs. So what do we look for when we're trying to categorize costs as period costs? Senior management salaries and bonuses, the accounting department, legal expenses, anything involving selling, that is sales, marketing, advertising, that's on the period side of the house as opposed to the product side of the house. Now let's ask a difficult question here. See if you can figure out how we're going to categorize a couple of expenses. How would we categorize the annual depreciation expense on a piece of factory equipment. Did you hear that term factory? It's over here in the factory. Depreciation on a piece of factory equipment would come under manufacturing overhead. Now, how would we categorize the annual depreciation expense for an office copier that is used in our sales office by our salespeople? That would be over here as a period cost because it supports the sales operation. What about the sales commissions that we pay to salespeople? They're not involved on the factory side. They are a period cost. Folks, I hope that helps you understand how we can tweeze apart costs into the factory or product costs versus the period costs over here which are selling expenses and general and administrative expenses. I want to point out that when we're looking to identify costs as product costs, we won't always see the term factory. You may have a problem which talks not about a factory, but instead discusses the production facility, manufacturing facility, assembly plant. All of those are terms for a facility or an operation where we are making things. Essentially, like the factory, those are product costs. And I want to make one other point about this. Even though we have shown our business being broken into two sides with two separate buildings, we do not have to have two separate buildings. All of this can be housed under one roof. And we can still separate out our expenses as product costs and period costs, but we need to look at the activity or the function behind each expense. So we don't have to look at two different buildings. It can be one building that houses the entire operation. And finally, we've been showing an example of a manufacturing company. What about a merchandising company? A merchandising company doesn't make things. They instead purchase inventory and then resell it. For a merchandising company, their product costs do not include any of these items such as direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Their costs that are product costs include the cost to purchase the inventory and any freight in expense. And what about a service company? A service company would not have any product costs. They only have period costs. Folks, 
I hope that helps, and good luck with your studying.